Morena, gentlemen. Welcome to another tremendous day of online learning. So today we're going to be continuing our look at promotion as one of the four P's of the marketing mix. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at informative versus persuasive advertising. Now, informative advertising, as the name suggests, it's there to inform consumers about the factual information relating to products and a business. So this could be the specific information relating to a price, the USP, i.e. the unique selling point, the technical specifications, or places where the product is sold. But these are objective truths, these are facts, which the advertising informs consumers about. They might also tell exactly how the product or business can solve consumers' needs or wants. Uh, it's ideal to use informative advertising uh, when the product is being launched or the business is new because customers are unlikely to have existing knowledge over the product. They're unaware of the product or the business. It's USP. Or we could use informative advertising uh, at a time when the product has been updated. Perhaps there's been a new model of the product that's come out and it might be a, a more environmentally ver uh, friendly version, have a much more powerful uh, camera attached to a smartphone, and we want to inform customers, customers about it. On the other hand, persuasive advertising is as the name suggests, and it's there to persuade or influence consumers' preferences. It's there to encourage consumers to switch their brand from the competitor to ours. We've persuaded them to give our product a go because of how compelling and how enticing our advertising is. And hopefully this is going to lead to some additional sales for us. So persuasive advertising is used to uh, support or create a distinct uh, image for our brand or its identity. We can use persuasive advertising to differentiate products, to separate our product from the competitor's product, uh, which is especially relevant in, in mass markets, even when there isn't much of a material difference between the products. So because products from our business might be quite similar to that of the, uh, the competitors, uh, persuasive advertising is where we want to focus our advertising energies as opposed to trying to inform customers about the differences which really aren't that material. So these persuasive advertising efforts target the emotions of consumers. They often focus on what pleasure does the product provide or pain it avoids. So those obviously are going to feed into uh, the emotions of the consumers because Humans, we love our pleasure and we, for the most part, very much avoid pain. Alrighty, so here we've got a fantastic ad. Uh, this is from the Super Bowl, one of the big American uh, sporting events. It's the OK ad and it relates to Pepsi. So this is a, a, an example of persuasive advertising. So I'd really suggest that you give this one a watch. And I think you're going to find uh, a couple of celebrities, more than a couple of celebrities in this in this ad as well. So it's certainly a good watch. Um, and it was very well received uh, by the American market. On the other side of the coin, we have one of my favorite examples of informative advertising. Uh, this is for Flex Tape. And this is more... Uh, informative in the sense that it really talks about the USP, the unique selling point of the product. Uh, it informs customers about uh, the performance of the product, uh, and it's very distinct in that sense than what you'll see from the Pepsi OK ad. So give that one a watch there, guys, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy uh, Mr. Phil Swift's efforts as well to inform you about flex tape. 
Alrighty. So, whether a business will use informative or persuasive advertising, it will depend on the type of product. So, technical products require more informative advertising than luxury products. So our examples here are computers versus perfume. So, with computers, I'm much more likely to be very mindful of the technical specifications, the technical capabilities of a computer, because that's going to reflect how I can use the computer. Now, I enjoy uh, playing games. I also uh, enjoy running lots of applications on my computers, and I will therefore very much care about the technical capability of a computer. And if a computer has more capability, then a competitor's are much more likely to buy it. So informative advertising would be much more suitable for this product type because it's going to really inform the customer over those specs, which is going to make um, a greater difference in those purchasing decisions. As opposed to Gucci or a, a perfume, the emotions involved with involved with consuming your perfume, i.e., you want to you want to feel uh, like you're fit for socialising in in highbrow settings. You want to uh, think that you are wearing something that is uh, going to enhance your popularity. You want to um, have a scent which is going to be um, up to date and 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 modern things that are quite emotional reasons to be buying the product. And you're going to feel much more comfortable wearing a perfume or a, a cologne um, that a celebrity also wears because you can um, feel that you're, you're certainly wearing something that's socially acceptable because that celebrity also wears it. And um, that sort of distinguishment is going to drive you to purchase the product and that persuasive advertising is going to do that as opposed to informative advertising where it gives you a breakdown of the ingredients within the perfume uh, that's less likely than uh, advertising which supports that emotional uh, desire for your perfume or cologne to be socially acceptable and something uh, that perhaps a popular person would wear Advertising budget. Informative advertising is often cheaper than persuasive. Now you might have picked that up by having a look at the, the Pepsi ad, the OK ad versus the Flex Tape ad. Whilst the Flex Tape ad, yeah sure, it did, did have some advertising costs, uh, nowhere near the extent that that persuasive advertising that Pepsi used. But just like I mentioned with regards to Gucci and their perfume or cologne over here, persuasive advertising um, often or, or sometimes uses celebrities to help generate that emotional response from consumers who want to be just like celebrities, who want to do things uh, and consume products um, that celebrities do because celebrities must consume products that are, that are cool and uh, and um, socially acceptable. So getting celebrities, obviously more expensive. Getting Phil Swift from Flex Tape, he might not cost quite so much. Um, also, when you're undergoing informative advertising, you're often outlaying or conveying factual information. And stating factual information uh, is easier than trying to ge elicit or generate emotional responses from people because you've got to put more energies into the narrative and the imagery um, that's contained in your advertising. So that point that for informative advertising, the unique selling point of a product can actually sell the product for you. If you just inform customers, hey, this is how good our product is, this is what it does, this is how it's exactly going to solve your need or want, that alone can generate the sale as opposed to um, going through a complex or expensive 
uh, process of trying to generate an emotional response, an emotional desire. So our target market, yes, younger people are more affected by persuasive advertising than the elderly. So this is um, a point that I'm probably going to refer to the, the wise heads of the elderly here, as opposed to the perhaps the gullibility or the susceptibility um, of youth towards uh, persuasive advertising. Younger people tend to be more emotional than elderly people. Elderly people perhaps are more calculating. Um, they've been exposed to more persuasive advertising by the time they get elderly and they're very much, and they've tried more products. So, so perhaps that's a reason why uh, the elderly want to just know how a product performs because they've tried the celebrity endorsed products and perhaps found out that they don't uh, quite satisfy the needs or wants of less glamorous products. So that's certainly a factor. The target market uh, will reflect the, the type of advertising a consumer will use. Also, if we're going from point of view of a market segment who uses a product for a particular purpose, so perhaps we're talking about a tool, a tool that could be used by um, everyday um, non-trades people who, who simply might want a tool to use on the weekend when they're doing a little bit of home maintenance, they're probably going to be more susceptible to persuasive advertising versus a professional or tradesperson who is going to need to use a tool uh, as part of their job and they'll be using that tool uh, for more complex uh, jobs and usages. So they're probably going to be more likely to, to uh, be enticed by informative versus persuasive advertising. Also cultural considerations need to be uh, borne in mind when it comes to um, the type of advertising. So they, they say in marketing that sex sells. So using, um, you know, handsome or, or, or beautiful celebrities, scantily clad and, and having that in your marketing, it's going to entice people to, uh, to purchase products. There are cultures around the world who that, that would be uh, entirely unacceptable and it would be incredibly uh, damaging for the business's brand to use uh, that kind of persuasive advertising that relies on sexual appeal uh, because it'd be highly inappropriate. So certainly cultural considerations are things that businesses should take into account when formulating its persuasive marketing, advertising rather. Alrighty, today's activity is just a quick one here guys. And that one is going to be task 12C on page 21 of the workbook. Any questions or issues, guys, please email me at t.horrocks at ags.school.nz. Kia kaha.